I'm here today to present some results for my PhD project, which I started uh, January this year, and which deals with the early urbanity of Copenhagen, seen through the study of social practices. And I'm interested in how it changed uh, people's lives to live in towns. And I believe that um, much can be said about early forms of urbanity by looking at uh, the pers taking the perspective of the human experience by looking at the, uh, the lived life in the towns. Um, for the analysis, I've set up four work packages, and they are craft and production, infrastructure, household and consumption, and cemeteries and their people. And in my project, I analyze the development from about 1050 until about 1300 for each of these work packages. And today I will present uh, some results and ideas related to the work with the first of these work packages, craft, which is dominated by iron processing, uh, which I will talk about today. So my questions for this paper are, what can the study of social practices connected to the first uh, phase of iron working activities, which is about 1050 to 1150, reveal of the urban development of people and networks involved in the iron handling? And what can the role of iron processing have been for the early development of the town? A few words about the term social practice, which is obviously taken from the social sciences and which refers to the routinized patterns of behavior in the daily life of people involving both material and immaterial elements like objects, infrastructure, specialized tools, adapted areas, intention and knowledge. And the idea is that the way people go about their everyday business, which leaves their material traces for archaeologists to find, tell a big story about the kind of life they lead. And social practices can, of course, be looked for everywhere in material culture, in features, finds, inclusions of soil, contextual relations, and overall organization of activities. But now off to Copenhagen in, uh, in Denmark, which is located centrally in the Øresund area in the southern Scandinavia. And, uh, here is the extent of the, la the established late medieval town with the location of my, my site, the town hall square, within the, the circle there. Um, and the, the early medieval phase of the town has long been fairly unknown and subject of discussion and many mm -hmm. theories. But if we zoom in to this uh, part here, um, later excavations show that the earliest phase of Copenhagen can be placed in the mid to late 11th centuries. We have remains of two cemeteries from this period, which indicate the presence of two churches. One was abandoned already after a hundred years. We have a ditch and a rampart, let's see if I can here, which uh, enclosed about five hectare large area, perhaps a fortified estate or a marketplace. We have settlement from the town hall square, which is placed here, to uh, this area here, uh, Gammeltor. And then we have dispersed settlement all the way to Kongsnytor, but we don't have many large excavation, not at all. So the, the material is quite, quite small for, for this part here. Um, but from this phase, we have quite a few craft remains here from the town, uh, from the site of uh, the town hall square, which seems to be the outskirts of the town, but we don't, we're not really sure because we haven't uh, excavated much uh, outside of it actually. But uh, um, the the remains show that iron smithing has been a relatively speaking important part of the activities here, uh, with uh, all the time until this uh, set part of the settlement was abandoned mm -hmm. in the 14th century. 
And this is a um, plan of the excavations from 2011 and 2012 from the Town Hall Square, uh, where we can see all the early medieval features until 1250 uh, this time. And um, you, the, the grey and the light green areas are all truncations or late archaeology, which have um, destroyed any early activities that might, um, that might have been there. So uh, the, the, um, the remains are rather fragmentary, as you can see. Uh, but the remains of iron processing were found uh, from in the whole medieval period in a total of uh, 55 features and a total of about 600 kilograms have been collected and some of the material was selected for metallurgical analysis which has been done by Arne Jutjavi in Denmark. And the remains consisted of workshop waste in the forms of slag, hammer scale, slag spheres and furnace wastes. And uh, preservation issues might be responsible for us not finding any in situ workshops. But um, typically the iron processing waste uh, was deposited in refuse pits or backfills of wells, like we see here, uh, together with household refu refuse of different kinds. And typical was also the use of slag for roads and other surfaces, as we see here. <coughs> and these are all the features with the iron processing remains uh, that I have. Um, uh, found from the first uh, uh, from the uh, first phase of the early medieval period, and they are marked with uh, uh, red. I hope that you can see them, and they are um, they are uh, also in relation to other features from this period. We have here um, part the first phase of a road, uh, the main road going into town at this point. Uh, we have here some um, fragmentary remains of buildings. Um, here is an area with a lot of pits and wells, and also here. Uh, here is uh, remains of a cemetery. But uh, as we can see, the, the red parts are um, existing in the whole area. Um, and I have, uh, for this analysis, I have uh, named this as the eastern part, the central part, and the western part. I'm sorry for this, I don't know how this happened, but maybe it woke you up. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is the same, uh, the same uh, information but in the table um, where also the types and amounts of uh, um, waste is, um, is uh, um, plotted. And as you can see, it's, uh, the remains are found mostly in pits and mostly in the western part, although uh, all areas are represented. And uh, some features which contain more types of and larger amounts of waste are likely to have been situated close to workshops and others might just be an unintentional consequence of the transportation of wastes. There's mostly slag from secondary smithing, although some primary smithing occur as well. Um, and as I said, uh, the slag is also used in a metal surface, which I will talk a bit, a bit about more in a minute. Uh, feature 143, a pit, was uh, selected for metallurgical analysis and there we can see that about 80% of the slag and most hammer scale come from secondary smithing uh, and the other from primary smithing. And uh, everything is from uh, bloomeries, uh, from, from simple smithing. And uh, analysis show that the blooms were probably from Norway or Sweden and uh, Western Jutland. And the iron objects which we found in the fe feature were not produced in these workshops. Um, slag spheres show that the iron had been overheated uh, in the smithing process. Um, yes, and this is uh, what it looked like to the left here. And a few words about the metal surface, uh, which, was, uh, which is, uh, is here. And uh, it was preserved in an area of uh, 15 by 10 meters. It was made of stones with inclusions of slag and large bones, and uh, we could see it had been constructed as one action. It also contained uh, wheel ruts, so maybe not so, uh, uh, yeah, there and there, going in slightly uh, different uh, directions. And uh, we can also see that one part survived a uh, reorganization of the area where large parts of it were covered by um, 
a leveling deposit, preparing for the next uh, phase of activity. Um, and uh, there you see it in uh, close up. Here is uh, what it looked like, and that's uh, uh, one of the wheel ruts. And for the features with the iron working residue, I've summarized what other finds were deposited in the same context and thus can be seen as remains of activities taking place in connection to the iron uh, processing. I put them into categories according to the activity that they relate to, and you can see that uh, the daily activities were spread uh, over the whole area, but more household activity were in the central and eastern parts. Craft uh, were in all areas, and metalworking as we see mostly in the central and western parts. And we have leisure and trade which is only found in the uh, eastern part, although it wasn't very much. And this could point to an area with a diverse set of activities practiced together, but perhaps with some tendencies of different uses of the sub-areas. So, to sum up, what information about social practices surrounding the iron processing have we got here? If we first look at the types of deposition of waste, we have it in pits together with household residue, which tells of a daily organization of the craft undertaken in connection to dwellings and the presence of a wide range of household finds indicate that not only the smiths but maybe whole families have been active in the area. And slag deposited as fillings in roads and surfaces tells of organized collecting of suitable slag lumps for this purpose. A need and intention and knowledge of this being a fairly trafficked road and surface as well as the fact that large enough quantities of the material were, were present. And the workshops produce simple objects made by smiths with medium or even low skills. And the overheating of iron, as shown in the slag spheres, could point to the presence of apprentices. And together this could place different elements of a town population here at this point. And the networks um, indicated towards Norway and Norway, Sweden, as well as Jutland is perhaps not uh, surprising either. So could this scenario be described as urban, or the social practices describe also <coughs> urban practices? The scenario follows a general pattern of early town craft in Scandinavia, with small scale, non-specialized, and situated in connection to dwellings, which is also seen in uh, larger towns like Lund, Bergen, and Old Lödösen. And if we take a broader look at the site at this time, uh, it's, uh, it's well known that iron production in early medieval Denmark was very important for the rise of the new kingdom. And wide complex networks surrounding the iron can be seen, as we have heard of earlier today, both in archaeological and written sources. And a place like Copenhagen, situated by the coast and close to the iron-rich provinces towards the east, would be a good place to use in the iron trade and craft network. So is this a town or something else? <coughs> well, first for the investigation of the early stages of urbanity, there is of course an absolute need of a contextualized view, taking many components into consideration, social practices as well as societal framework. And the analysis of craft from the first phase of the settlement indicates a quality and scale of production which is modest, uh, perhaps comparable to that of a rural farm. The connection to other daily activities could be said to speak of the same. One thing which do stand out is the metal surface for which slag was used, a prepared open space used among other things as a road. And this is a feature not likely to be found in a village, I believe. And together with what we know else from Copenhagen at this point, a place with uh, two churches, an enclosed or fortified area, a location at the increasingly important Øresund. Uh, this place, having started as a, a rural village, does not seem very likely. It should maybe instead be seen in relation to its placement by the coast with its communicative uh, aspects. And the partly rural character seen in the organization of daily life and craft should instead be taken as evidence of the close connection between the newly established town and the countryside. Um, and the very early Copenhagen was a place to which people recently had moved, most likely from different places, most likely rural places. 
and the newly established places led to encounters with new people which meant new set of social rules and new social roles. No doubt much were trans transferred from the old places, but there were still things which needed to be negotiated. And I think we need to see the construction of social life in the new places as laying the ground for an, an urban way of life and for the birth of an urban ethos. Thank you.